Okay, so inverse matrices. <clears throat> so the first thing you need to know about an inverse matrix is that A inverse multiplied by A is going to equal I, so the inverse of A multiplied by A is going to equal I, which is the identity matrix. So I, well, if we do it as a three by three, this is one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. Or, let's see, so three by three. <clears throat> and then if we do it in the most general sense, this would be one, zero, dot, 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 all the way up to zero. Zero, one, zero, dot, 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 all the way up to zero. Zero, dot, 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 all the way up to zero. Zero, one. If we consider Binary. Okay, so these are the identity matrix. And so this is the equivalent of multiplying by one. Okay? So the identity matrix acting upon any matrix just gives you the original matrix that you were dealing with. Right? Okay, a couple other facts about inverse matrices. <clears throat> if you have a B inverse, that actually equals B inverse, A inverse. Okay? Now, why would we want this property to happen? That if you multiply two inverse matrices, uh, I mean, if you had two matrices being multiplied by each other, and you said you want their inverse, well, we want it to be B inverse, A inverse. So, <clears throat> The reason that we want something like that is that we want this A, B inverse, A, B, to actually equal the identity matrix. So this would be B inverse, A inverse, A, B. Okay, now A inverse and A would cancel each other out. So this would equal now B inverse times B and so B inverse times B will actually equal the identity matrix. Okay. So <clears throat> let's figure out how do we actually find inverse matrices. So let's say A is going to equal 1, negative 2, 1, negative 1. Okay, so we'll start out with the 2 by 2 matrix. Okay. And so when you're looking for an inverse matrix, what you're going to do is you're going to augment this with the identity matrix um, and try to swap the identity matrix to the other side. So. I'm going to set up like this, 1, 1, negative 2, negative 1, now we're going to augment 1, 0, 0, 1, like this. Okay, so you augment with the identity matrix, and now what your goal is, is to take everything on this side of the problem and turn this into the identity matrix while doing the same operations to this side of the problem, and then whatever you end up with on the right side of the problem is actually going to be your inverse matrix. Okay, so the first thing that I would want to do is say, what if I took this top guy, I multiplied by negative one, and I added it to the bottom, because that's going to give me a zero right there. Okay, so now my top is not being influenced, this is one, 
This is negative two. Our goal is to get a zero right there. So this is one, this is zero. Now negative one added downwards would be negative one and one. We're gonna close that spot right there. And then if I take negative two and I multiply by negative one, that's gonna turn into a positive two. Now a positive two and a negative one would turn into a positive one. Okay. Oh, well, this one ended up actually being kind of simple. So now uh, what I would want to do is I need to eliminate this negative two right here because we want one, zero, zero, one to be the identity matrix that's going to appear in this position right here. So to do that, what would I do? I would take this bottom row, multiply by two, and then I would add a And so that would give me one, zero, zero, one. Now augmented with negative one, one. If I multiply one by two and add it upwards, that's gonna be two. If I multiply negative one by two, that turns into a negative two, and a negative two and a positive one would be a negative one, okay? So this is my A inverse right here, right? So, <clears throat> How would I check my work? So I'd say A inverse A would equal, okay, so this would be scoop up here. negative one, negative one, two, and one. Now acting upon one, one, negative two, negative one. Now let's make sure that this equals the identity matrix. So remember, you're having a row act upon a column for any individual element of this. So negative one, two, acting upon this on one, one, what do you even get? You didn't get a negative one and a positive two. So a negative one and a positive two is a one, all right? Now if I go over to the next position right here, so I'm gonna have a negative one, two, <clears throat> act upon that guy right there. Okay, so it's acting upon the second column. So negative one times negative two, well, negative one times negative two would turn into a positive two. And now two acting upon negative one, that would turn that into a negative two. So we have a positive two and we have a negative two. So the positive two and the negative two, they cancel each other out. And so this would turn into a zero, okay? Now negative one, one, now we're taking this row, acting upon that column right there. So this negative one is being multiplied by that one, this positive one is being multiplied by that one. So what do we end up with? We end up with negative one and positive one, add them together. So negative one and a positive one turns into a zero. And now in this one, we're having this row act upon that column. So if I have a negative one being multiplied by a negative two, what is that gonna do? That's gonna turn into a positive two, okay? And then a one acting upon that negative one or being multiplied by that negative one right there, that would turn that into a negative two. So we have a positive two and a negative one, well, two minus one is one. So we're gonna get a one. One, zero, zero, one. And that is the identity matrix for a two by two. So, but we did get to the, the correct answer. So we, got, we found what the inverse matrix, matrix was.